Gamers, we've been going for a pretty long time right now. And it's time to go around again. Okay. It is time to talk about our final set of changes. Our final set of professions. It's going to be the heavy professions. It is going to be Guardian. It is going to be Revenant. And it is going to be Warrior. And what has happened in these universes? Uh, heal Firebrands are very happy. Berserker gives quickness now. Blade Sword and gives alacrity. I have to say, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. And Revenant gets basically nothing. Herald gets reworked a little bit, though. Nerfed in World Blood Sword. Have fun. Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and dive into it. So Guardian actually has pretty uneventful, you know, just, you know, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, yeah. That, that's how I kind of feel about the Guardian changes, to be honest. Um, Signets just have lower baseline cooldowns now. Notably nice for Bane Signet. Great for nailing that CC without needing to have perfect inscriptions. Really nice there to have that. Uh, Signet of Wrath, also potential increase in utility for your Quickness Firebrand builds or DPS Firebrands that might have this. So you can immobilize without getting punished with a DPS loss nearly as much. Kind of nice, I guess. Eternal Armory. This is actually a fun one. You now get um, cooldown reduction on Bow of Truth and Hammer of Wisdom in PvE just for free. Right, uh, by the way. So, a flat buff to heal Firebrand. It's kind of nifty too, actually, because this is a really big part of your healing. Specifically, your ranged healing as well. So, a lower cooldown on that. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I got no complaints there. Uh, really, that's, that's good. I mean, Firebrand is good in PvE now, and it's a little bit better. Okay, and easier to CC if you want to take Hammer of Wisdom. Because uh, I always feel like Hammer of Wisdom often isn't quite as compelling, uh, given, like, Bane Signet is good, Sanctuary is good. This ability, I feel like, doesn't quite make the grade very often these days. It used to, actually, funny enough. Um, and, and maybe it still does in, like, mega speed runs, but, yeah. I haven't really seen it for a while, to be honest. Monk's Focus, you don't get meditation skills, um, you know, cool that anymore. So, guess what? Can you see the pattern? Everything gets reduced. And these are actually quite nifty, by the way. And again, I think this really exemplifies what they're trying to do here. They're really trying to say you can take these skills even if you don't trait for them. So look, Merciful cooldown down, Judges cooldown down, Smite Condition cooldown down, Contemplation cooldown also gets reduced as well. And perhaps most importantly, Litany of Wrath cooldown goes down. This is very nice um, for any kind of DPS Guardian in PvE. This is one of the best heal skills in the game. Okay, and now it's even better. There it is. I have to say, they're reducing the cooldown of all of these abilities can be a little bit spooky. Uh, maybe some kind of bunker guardian might emerge in PvP. Definitely got to watch out for that. I don't want to play against that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, definitely a concern. But overall, I think nothing super impactful. However, there is something a little bit impactful here uh, with purer voice. This trait no longer reduces the cooldown on shout skills. And guess what? That means every shout skill cooldown goes down. And that's in PvE as well. Um, I, I think this... I'm not sure what this note is. I think the cooldown on advance is going down in PvE as well. They've listed... Uh, they've listed the PvP cooldown here, I think. Let me just quickly check. I, I think this is a typo, actually. Um, because the ammo recharge is not 40 seconds. It's 30 seconds. So I believe this might be a typo. Maybe? Not sure. Think so. Um, but anyway, uh, advance is presumably going to go down to 24 seconds uh, in its cooldown as a baseline. And, yeah, stand your ground is going down to 24 seconds um, in PvE. Uh, and this is a change that maybe I would reverse, to be honest, because the dominance of Aegis and stability for Firebrand is not super healthy for the game, in my opinion. And this, of course, pushes it further. You don't take pure voice. Aina are basically saying here, yeah, hey, heal Firebrand mains. You just get 20% cooldown reaction on two of your best skills. Right? L literally, two of your best skills in the game, um, cooldown reduction. That's a little bit questionable, uh, to be honest. If you ask 
Me, at least. They didn't actually reduce the quarter to fill my wrath um, in PvE. Like, they didn't want to kind of uh, mess with the quickness uptime uh, on that remaining shout. That kind of makes sense. Uh, hold the line. Maybe what, if they keep reducing the cooldown, maybe this skill will end up being good. Uh, right now, it isn't. And I don't see the heal skill being particularly compelling in PvE, but of course it has its place in PvP. So that is, of course, acceptable. But yeah, with Pure Voice, this definitely opens the door um, in other game modes, like PvP, to maybe pick some of the other traits, like uh, Force of Will, for example, particularly on Firebrand. I think they want you to take Force of Will so that you can get your condition cleanse from your Firebrand abilities, the Tome abilities, and so on, and you can get more health, more tankiness to help Firebrand survive, because I think these changes were actually aimed at making PvP Firebrand a bit better. I don't think it's really succeeded, but who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll see how well that ages when we see the patch. But anyway, uh, now we go on to Consecrations, and hey, can you guess what it's going to be? Yep, cooldown reduction has now come through. Uh, you no longer need Master of Consecrations to actually uh, get the cooldown reduction on any of these things. So, once again, you can just go ahead and use Hallowed Ground, Purging Flames, Sanctuary, and Wall of Reflection. Nice and easily there. Hey, look, we buffed Hybrid Firebrand a little bit, guys. Hell yeah, we don't need that uh, anymore. Still don't get the extra duration, of course, from these things, but still pretty nice. And cooldown reduction on Sanctuary. Also welcome if you don't have that Virtues trait line for Master of Consecrations. Pretty good stuff. Didn't touch the Staff trait, did they? That's kind of weird. You know, Guardian kind of got away with it. Like, it's got one cooldown reduction trait left over. Uh, but in general, quite nice to have a bit of cooldown reduction on some of these pretty powerful and impactful abilities. Uh, and again, yeah, like, the Sanctuary stuff is potentially a little bit disturbing, because again, like, if this gets... <laughs> this is a little bit, uh, a little bit spooky. Uh, I think. It's a very, very powerful ability. You've got to watch out for this in PvP, I think. Potentially getting really annoying if the cooldown goes too low. In that regard. Uh, but yeah. There you go, guys. There you have it. For all of the cooldown reductions. Very exciting stuff. But yeah, most notably the shouts. Uh, just super nice for, uh, for PvE, right? Super nice for PvE Firebrand. Uh, and yeah, a little bit of stuff on... PvP Firebrand 2, and I guess we'll talk about Firebrand next, because I'm not going to lie, guys. Guardian is basically saying, hey, look, look, guys, look, 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 we reduced the cooldowns. <laughs> we did, look, we did it. <laughs> the, the cooldown's gone down, guys. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it, it's something. All right, it is content, guys. It is content. Gameplay has happened. Okay. Ah, yes. But anyway, Firebrand and PvP. So, the big one here is Weighty Terms. This trait no longer reduces the Mantra Charge recovery time, so you don't get your Mantras coming back quicker. Instead, you get two pages from using the final charge instead of one. This is actually big uh, for heal Firebrand and kind of DPS Firebrands um, and quickness DPS Firebrands. So... A page is, you get it every seven seconds, right? Um, uh, depending on your traits, actually, right? Because if we look here, actually. Um, uh, it's every eight seconds. And with Lore Master, it's every six. I know numbers, guys. I pick the one in the middle, okay? So normally you get a page every eight seconds. If you, and if you have the healing trait, basically, it's every six seconds. So think about this. What does this trait say? This trait says, kind of, recharge my tome skills by 16 seconds or 12 seconds on heal firebrand whenever you finish a mantra. And basically all of your tome skills. It gives you that fuel to use them. This is very strong. Bear in mind, one page was actually very strong. One page was really good. This is kind of... This is pretty big. It's very juicy. And yeah, I know not everyone um, really appreciates the mantra gameplay. Kind of burning through them, right? And um, uh, getting those extra pages and kind of like re-channeling them over and over. I know, every, no, I know everyone likes that. But I'm kind of trying... I'm trying to come at this from a balance angle. It's actually very powerful. This means you're going to have more damage potential, more utility potential, more healing potential, right? Whenever you're using these mantras, and bear in mind, you're going to be using the heal mantra almost all the time, the quickness mantra, the burning mantra a lot of the time, right? You're going to have a lot of pages. You are really going to be kind of almost getting back to old Firebrand, but also with no cooldowns on your tomes. This is very impactful and very powerful. 
Uh, actually. And of course, in an emergency, right, you can get yourself an extra, you know, two pages from using your heal skill final charge, which you don't normally do. Uh, and this is all kind of part of the PvP angle, I think. So if we take a look at this opening passage, this is basically the heal, uh, the regen mantra. It will cleanse two condies instead of just one, which is a bit meh, wasn't it really? For an entire utility skill. And the ammo recharge is going up to 18 seconds in PvP to compensate. Because again, they kind of want you to lean into using it and then rechanneling it. Clarify conclusion um, has been nerfed to kind of compensate for getting the extra condi on the normal ability. From five down to three. But it does convert them into boons, which is pretty good. And there's kind of a picture that you've got to paint here. They want Firebrand to be able to use more abilities in PvP, and I think some of them are still too expensive. I'm not going to lie. I don't see Firebrand in PvP. They're, I just don't see it. It's too squishy. It doesn't have the sustain that Core Guard does. Um, its healing is okay, um, but the, it, it's so expensive to use those abilities. It's so expensive in PvP to use them. I, I think the page cost is still a little bit too high, even with the additional generation. But yeah, they really want to try and say, okay, you can take Force of Will to be a bit tankier, or you can cleanse the Condies so you don't need pure voice, and you can still take the Shouts because of the cooldown reduction, because you still want uh, you still want to have Stand Your Ground, right? You still want to have Advance, probably, in PvP. But it's like, oh man, I don't see it. Like, Tempest is still really good. Uh, Core Guard is still really good. Um, hell, I would even argue that Tempest almost has like a better job of giving stability than Firebrand does at this point um, in, in PvP, right? There's a lot of stability access on Tempest. Yeah, I don't think Firebrand's there yet. I think it will need a few more patches. They are being cautious because Firebrand kind of dominated the game for a very long time in PvP, but some good news for the PvE fans for Firebrand, right? You're going to be using your abilities a lot more, and I think just a, a significant overall buff to Firebrand in PvE, both heal and offensive builds. And then look at you guys. Look at Dragon Hunter, guys. Look. Guys, check this out. Whoa. Isn't this insane? Trap cooldowns went down. Whoa. Now, let me think about this actually real quick. Um, you, you, what trait do you actually care about in Adapt right now? Can't you just pick anything? Can you just take the movement speed trait? Because it, it just gives you slow, right? It basically gives you slow on trap, which I guess is nothing, right? It's not nothing, right? It, it's it's slow, I guess. But uh, I guess you can go ahead and pick any of them. So you could maybe pick the extra movement speed, right? Or the immobilize, I guess, from soaring devastation, potentially. I think that's potential. Yeah. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. We can definitely go there. We can definitely make that happen. We 100% can. Um, in PvP, this is nice, of course. Um, you've got to think about that from a PvP perspective. Because, of course, now you just get the cool direction kind of baseline. So you have a lot more damage. And that, you know, it frees up your trait choice there as well. In this regard. So you can, you know, you can stealth more frequently. You can do damage more frequently. Which is pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. I get it, I get it, I get it. So, you know, that's something. Um... You might be noticing, there are no changes to Willbender. That is because uh, ArenaNet have forgotten that Willbender exists. However, I will point out that DPS Willbender is good. I, to be to be honest, you know, look, I, this is I don't actually think this, but let's just joke about it for a moment. I'm pretty sure Anet look at a lack Willbender and just go, "How are we supposed to fix this again?" Like, <laughs> and they don't actually think that. Okay. It, you, we couldn't get everything. We, we we saw a huge amount of stuff addressed in here. We, we had like a billion builds have quickness now. Like a zillion builds have alacrity now, okay? Like I'm sure they just did, they couldn't quite fit it in, okay? To, to be clear. But yeah, alack Wilbund is a bit weird. It, it definitely needs a bit of a rework, right? It, it needs rework. Damage is fine, right? Damage is fine. But the alacrity build, it needs definitely some love and care. It needs to be addressed, right? To, uh, to improve it, to make it a bit more playability, right? All that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think we'll get that next time. But that's basically it for our Guardian fans. Honestly, some, I mean, it's a bit, how do I, I guess a bit lukewarm. I mean, it's, it's, you know, a, a little, um, a little lukewarm, I guess. You know, it's, 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 it's all right. It's all right. You know, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. We'll be kind of cool. You know what? Before I leave, I would like to see Firebrand be healthy in PvP. Why? Because I don't view Core Guardian as very healthy. Here's the thing about Core Guard in PvP. Almost everything it does is instant cast. I know mantras are as well, but like, let, let's just... Let's just pretend that mantras don't exist. Let's just pretend that... Let's just pretend that nothing exists. But 
Firebrand is actually quite nice that it has cast times, right? And that means it has a lot more counterplay than something like Core Guard. Because Core Guard, you just spam stuff that your opponent can't really interact with. Like instant cast healing, instant cast cleanse, instant cast, you know, Aegis and stability and stuff like that. It's like, there. I don't really like that type of gameplay in PvP. I don't think it's super healthy. I think it's much better to have uh, kind of hard casted skills, a little bit like Tempest. Right, so you have a bit more counterplay, um, or indeed Firebrand, right? So making Firebrand healthy, and be careful with that in PvP, I think would be a positive change actually for the support metagame in Guild Wars 2. That's my final thought on that. Uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, 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 scrub, okay. <laughs> let's talk about Revenant. Here we go. So, with Revenant, we learn Arena Net play GVG. Yeah, Grouch is a gvg -er, not a Banish Enchantment fan. Uh, so basically, th why is this, this ability is being nerfed in World vs. World specifically? Because it turns out that you could spam this skill and absolutely shred a huge amount of boons. Because bear in mind, guys, one fun thing about this skill is that it actually hits everyone between you and your target. So you could remove a ludicrous amount of boons from enemies uh, using Banish Enchantment. Don't get me wrong, this is still a good skill. Um, you can chill a target, you can remove a vast amount of boons from targets when you use this ability appropriately and correctly. Um, so still good. Right, and it's unblockable too. Yeah, or why not, right? Um, and it removes boons. So it's not bad, but this skill was certainly kind of wild, right? And again, uh, while we are here, I do want to say that we are certainly going to need to see how the patch actually plays out in terms of boon balling. We've seen fairly consistent nerfs um, to boon removal the entire time, and we're going to see a few more on Warrior as well. And that is a potential concern that Arena and Dude need to kind of keep an eye on there. Uh, but honestly, not that much for Rev here, as you can see, guys. Uh, kind of keeping on the world versus world topic. Uh, Heal Rev got nerfed. Tree Song, nerfed. Ernest St. Victor, nerfed. Saint Shield, nerfed. Uh, again, healing multipliers going down. Number of Connie's cleanse. Honestly, this build was kind of busted. Uh, and I actually still expect it to perform extremely well after the patch. Uh, it's a very good build. It heals a lot. It cleanses a lot. Uh, it's incredibly durable. It gives barrier as well, which is beautiful. Barrier is really nice to kind of absorb damage in World vs. World. It got nerfed. Relatively um, hard hit here, for sure, right? But I actually expect it to still be pretty damn good, actually. Uh, despite the fact that this is a little bit less. It's like a 40% nerf, I want to say here. Uh, kind of eyeballing the numbers overall. But I don't think it's going to be bad by any stretch of the imagination post-patch. Uh, and then moving on, I guess we'll do PvP before we go to the uh, the really fun stuff. Uh, the big changes, uh, they're trying to just gently give Condi Rev a bit of a nudge. Um, so Demonic Defiance will now remove a Condi when you use a Legendary Demon skill, a damaging Condi specifically, because of course Resistance will make you immune to the non-damaging ones. The reason they did this is because basically kind of bring it up to speed with what it used to do. Resistance used to make you immune to all conditions. So obviously, you know, taking that away essentially kind of nullified half of this skill so now it gives you a bit more condi control uh on this build condi rev is not bad it's just and again it's one of these things that i view a little bit like a lot of the 1v1 builds the current meta is a little bit too fast for condi herald having said that it did see high level play in the monthly on kind of the small enclosed uh, like, um, enclosed maps, right? Where you can't navigate around it quite well, and this, this, this kind of evil demon thing is just on you. Seriously, I played in Daily AT against Condi Herald, it was harrowing, okay? Right? It, it, it was bloody terrifying, seriously. Right? And, and now it's gonna be slightly better again, because this thing is just gonna be in these fights. Uh, a little bit slow, of course, but certainly on certain maps, in certain compositions, with certain strategies, like specifically lots of team fighting, right? Not a lot of mobility required. Uh, I think Condi Rev can really deliver some value. Kind of comparable to Condi Reaper, I would say, uh, in what its function is. Pretty tanky build, pretty durable build, can hold its own in a 1v1, can survive 1vx roll, and just, it just grinds you right down. Like, this is one of those builds that's inevitable, right? Like, it's... It's inevitable. If it's stuck in the team fight with you, it will kill you eventually. It's going to stick on your support or it's going to stick on your DPS and it will hunt you down until you die. It just keeps doing DPS and it's very sticky, right? When it actually connects to you, it's very sticky. So, definitely a uh, little bit of extra buff there. 
Aggressive agility gives resistance now. This seems to be a bit of a trend. We've got resistance for days, guys, on all these builds. This trait, though, not super popular. I guess you could maybe see this on Power Herald, but, I mean, Power Herald is, is trash, okay? You know what? Look, if you play... Pa if I see someone playing Power Herald in PvP, I go, ooh, Wind Trader. Nah, I... I <laughs> it's not that bad, but it, it's pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. It, it's, uh... I, yeah, I don't see this being relevant. Like, I, I've got a little bit of extra, uh, a little bit of extra healing on battle scars, but like, yeah, whatever, okay. Uh, and a nerf to force engagement as well on Jalus. This spell is kind of cancer, to be fair. Uh, the range is 900, but it won't hit five people anymore. It will only hit the one. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there you go. No more five taunt. Oh, it was kind of funny, actually, like, throwing out five chains, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> and it would just like latch onto everyone and taunt them in, but yeah, it's being nerfed down there a little bit uh, to uh, deal with that. I guess that kind of sucks in PvE to me. It's a bit of AoE CC with your forced engagement. Could also be pretty reasonable. But let's go to the main event. The big one is that the quickness on Herald is being reworked. And this is kind of what I was expecting, actually. Um, the big deal is that you're going to be running Elevated Compassion instead of Draconic Echo. Uh, and specifically, it's now going to, um, when you have more than six upkeep, you will uh, pulse boons, basically. Uh, and it's going to be quickness. The reason it says boons here, by the way, is it's vigor in PvP, and it's going to be quickness in PvE. That's When they say boons, because it's balance split, basically. So it's quickness in PvE. Um, this basically means that you have a lot more freedom over how you give boons, right? So, for example, you can basically give boons in any legend now. If you're in Ventari, if you're in Jalus, if you're in Glint, you can still give your quickness. Uh, the big thing here, to be honest, um, is you've just got to change the rotation a bit. Yeah, that, that's that's it. Your rotation's going to be a bit different. Because, of course, you still want to maintain uptime of bursts of strength damage uh, um, output uh, in PvE. And you probably want to use Elemental Blast as well. And you probably want to activate Facet of Nature to, um, uh, to extend boons. You're probably going to end up maintaining the Fury... Um, and your protection, the elite skill, quite a lot, right? Those two will give you enough upkeep to actually start pulsing out your quickness. Uh, and then you can probably use them as you then swap over to your other legend. And then you simply start channeling either impossible odds or you're going to start channeling your Jalus hammers or whatever, your bubble, right? And that will probably get you the rest of the way. Uh, to being able to uh, apply your quickness. Uh, what's interesting is that this actually means that you're, even on power quickness held, you're actually going to heal allies a surprising amount. Look at this. You're going to heal allies when you give them boons. Once every three seconds, you're going to heal five people. That's actually kind of significant, especially seeing as you're going to have a bit of lifesteal on Shiro as well, right? You will, um, you know, you have your lifesteal F2 will be up a little bit, so allies will actually get sustained a fair bit. That will kind of be impactful. You will still apply the boons. You won't quite um, apply as many boons in terms of um, might and swiftness because you don't have Draconic Echo kind of causing the pulse to continue and you won't have as much uptime on your F2. So this is definitely a bit of a kind of a buff nerf, right? Like you're gaining some things and you're losing other things. Overall, uh, I do think that this is actually going to be a slight usability improvement. Uh, to Herald, uh, broadly speaking, it's going to be very much uh, in exactly the same place, I think, um, with, you know, what you're doing, right? Like, it, Herald is still going to be very good. It's just going to play significantly differently. Um, one thing that is a little bit interesting is that you're going to be a bit more... You're going to be a bit more energy-starved in Jalus specifically, and that means your stability is actually going to suffer a little bit here. Um, because you need to be channeling your hammers to give quickness, and that might cause you to run out of energy as well. So that's a bit of a thing. So this overall might be a little bit of a nerf um, to power quickness herald, but it will certainly still be a very strong build. I will have to see like how much you have to upkeep, because bear in mind, guys, you'll probably end up overcapping, so you can probably not permanently channel, right? You'll have opportunities where you have that flexibility to maybe not channel for a while, uh, while you still have quickness uptime on you, so you can use your Jalus, you can use your Jalus elite skill, all of that kind of stuff, without actually dropping the quickness. Uh, big win for heal herald as well. Uh, to bear that in mind, guys, because um, this Heal Herald loves this trait, right? Now you just get even more healing, right? It's just you heal more on your Heal Herald. Nice. And um, it also does give you a bit more flexibility. It kind of allows you um, to kind of camp 
a little bit more, right? Um, on Ventari, for example, because you can like maintain the bubble, I guess. Uh, wait, does the bubble actually? Uh, yeah, the bubble does give. Yeah, the bubble does give you enough um, uh, upkeep as well, actually. So yeah, you just heal a little bit more. Not having Draconic Echo actually kind of does suck for healer health though, because it means that you don't have e your boon application sucks. Um, your boon application kind of sucks, doesn't it? Outside of, uh, uh, outside of Glint. And yeah, I guess theoretically, you could actually, ooh, yeah. Theoretically speaking, you can run without Glint. You could do like Jalus Ventari. Not sure if you want to do that though, because Glint is pretty good. Uh, the boons there are really nice. Uh, ugh, ugh. Yeah, this is a bit of a bit of a meme. Uh, but you know, look, hey, I think what's important here is to think about the fact that you might not necessarily be locked into this in the future. If they made the boons on Ventari a lot better, that means maybe you could actually run Heal Herald um, with uh, no glint. I don't see that happening right now, um, but it could happen in the future at some point. Uh, it definitely could happen. Yeah. When I think about this change, this is actually a bit questionable. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> this is actually a little bit questionable um, overall. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. I don't think Heal Herald is dead. No? I think this is still a little bit of a win um, for, for Heal Herald. Because you still have, like, mega boon application. And you can, you can go to Ventari. I don't see how this kills it. How does this kill Heal Herald? I, I don't see it, guys. You have to tell me. Uh, I think it's fine. Uh, you get a little bit extra healing, even. What's the bad thing here? Like, why is it bad? Uh, not having Draconic Echo definitely sucks. And Draconic Echo in general, uh, I think this will be a good trait for um, Condi Herald, I think, actually. In PvP, again, another slight buff to Condi Herald, because now you get, like, extra Condi damage, right? Extra damage output, damage reduction, right? When you use some of these things. So Herald, in general, gets a bit tankier in PvP, because I'm pretty sure you're still going to use that trait, I think, um, rather than the other two. In, uh, in my mind, at least. Yeah. Neil, as much as you don't keep pulsing with the Draconic Echo, you have to choose what boons you give now. You can't just keep, um, uh, all the... All the facets going? Well, um... Wait. Don't you, like, mega overcap, though, right now? I think you omega overcap. Uh, you have to legend swap, um, on CD. Um, you, you have a lot of time, though, I feel like, to do that. I mean, maybe. We'll have to see how this one plays out. Yeah. I think it really de- I think it really depends, um what the number is. What if what if, if you have 100% boon duration, you like giga over cap on quickness? I agree. If it's like super tight and you have to like maintain the entire time, but there's no way they'll do that. Like you'll over cap a lot, I think. Um, so I, I, th I think this is fine. I'm going to make the call. All right, guys, I'm not going to fence it. I'm making the call. Heal Herald is actually fine. It might even be a little bit happy with this. Nice. There it is. Boom. Yeah, the rotation on Quickness Herald might be a little bit putrid because you're going to burn a lot of energy. So you're going to be a bit energy starved. But Heal Herald, I think you're okay. Okay. That is it for Revenant. And I believe... I believe... We have made it. All the way to the end. The final frontier, guys. The final frontier. It's happening. Oh, yeah. Actually, we do know the value, guys. It's three seconds every three seconds with no boon duration. So it will be six seconds of quickness every three seconds with 100% boon duration. That should allow you to uber cap, I think, um, quickness. It should work out pretty well. I do have to say, though, uh, final thoughts after thinking about it a little bit. I think this does suck a little bit for Power Quickness Herald because you use quite a lot of energy uh, to use your abilities. We might have to see some energy cost reductions on maybe some weapon skills in PvE uh, and also maybe some utility skills in PvE because it's going to be very costly actually right now. Um, very, 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 very costly. Um, so we'll have to see. that. Uh, that's maybe... Uh, yeah, and you also have the F2 duration too as well. That is true, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But make no mistake, I don't think Power Equipment Herald is bad. I think it will still be good. But you're going to have to be very careful with your energy. Otherwise, you aren't going to be able to spam roads and, uh, uh, you know, uh, jealously in the same way that you used to be able to. All right. Now we're done with that. It's warrior time. Here we go, guys. That's right. CMC has finished his quest of reverting almost every change that happened before he was head of the skills team. That's right, guys. Quickness, that's gone from banners. And we're in business. Berserker, Quickness, and Alacrity Bladesworn. Um, bit of a crazy one. Didn't see that coming, but let's dive in. Okay, here we go. So, you know what? I'm logging in again. Okay. <laughs> I'm in. So, we've got the usual. You can probably get this already, guys. Cooldown reductions going across the board on a lot of weapon skills, on rifle, on longbow, because the cooldown reduction traits, and also on our physical skills, uh, because of peak performance. Uh, signets as well, getting their cooldowns reduced. Shouts getting their cooldowns reduced once again. Double standards gives resolution instead of quickness. Rip that trait. <laughs> But still, the pulsing boons are still going to go up there, so not actually that horrible, to be fair. So you can still use that for resistance application, for example. But let's get into the real meat of this. Some actual changes to Rifle Warrior. Uh, kind of pushing it in PvP, I think. I very much doubt it's going to make the cut in PvE as of right now. But there are actually a few Rifle Warrior builds, specifically on Berserker, that can honestly be an absolute menace uh, right now with their damage output. And a few kind of usability improvements here, kind of across the board. Uh, so you can actually burst very hard with volley. You can double use it instead of having that kind of five seconds of downtime. Uh, same thing on explosive shell, by the way, and also on brutal shots. So you can do a double evade, and also, more importantly, you evade immediately and then fire afterwards to get the immobilize. Instead of firing and then evading afterwards, making it much more reactive, but also way easier to line a combo up. So you roll back, fire. If you land your immob, then you can immediately volley, right? As, as opposed to having to do the roll as well. Uh, so definitely some significant improvements, actually, in being able to line up your attacks correctly on, say, a big Berserker one-shot uh, meme build. Is it going to be, like, seriously competitive uh, in PvP? I very much doubt it, but it definitely has a place in World vs. World. Like, when you're kind of dealing in smaller groups, or even when you're just, like, sniping people from, you know, on top of a wall, like, you could absolutely delete people um, with these builds. They're, they're a lot of fun to play. You've got to watch out. You see a Berserker running towards you guys? You gotta watch out, okay? It's uh, it's not a good time. Nice usability to the um, actual baseline um, F1 for sword. You can move while using the skill uh, right off the bat there as well. Um, just quality of life there. And you also get some more bleeding uh, alongside. A little bit more power as well. Yeah, Torch didn't get its cooldown reduction. Um, unlucky. How does that feel? You hate to see it. Yeah, I believe, yeah, that's Heat the Soul is being reworked entirely there. But... We've got some cooldown reductions here. It's pretty cool. Uh, a lot of these shouts, I think, um, get somewhat more compelling, actually, because their cooldown is not tied to vigorous shouts anymore. And you don't always want to go into the vigorous shouts trait line, actually, to kind of have access to this stuff. That's not really something. That's not a direction that you want to go in. What's notable here, actually, is... Soldier's Comfort and Martial Cadence for the core game. So, Soldier's Comfort gives protection. Actually, pretty damn nice, to be fair. And Martial Cadence gives stability instead of quickness in PvE. It still gives quickness in PvP, uh, but and World versus World, but in PvE, it gives stability. This, this is very interesting, by the way, because the, the tactics trait line, just bear, just consider this, my friends. The tactics trait line is actually very, very powerful. Uh, it is very good, actually. Just overall. In fact, of course, you run it on full DPS Bladesworn. And this isn't going to usher in a new era of Heal Warrior, but it kind of... Look, I'd really be watching the um, the patch notes uh, next time, guys. Because it seems like they want to go there. You know, we, we can already do, um, you know... We can now get some... Uh, alacrity or quickness, I guess alacrity on our heal blade sworn, maybe. We've got shout heal, but well, martial cadence gives stability. We get protection when we use our burst skill, right? This is actually pretty interesting. And we gain stability whenever you use a burst skill um, with martial cadence. I mean, 
this is pretty interesting. Well, it's not every single time. It's like, you know, whatever you get sold as focus, which is what, every 10 seconds. So stability every 10 seconds. This will come packaged into DPS Blade Sworn, by the way, and of course, Alacrity Blade Sworn. So Blade Sworn actually is pretty happy about this because now whenever you, you unleash your soldier's focus with your dragon trigger, you're going to give a little bit of AoE protection uh, and also you're going to give some stability as well. Uh, and again, it ain't happening yet, right? And it isn't on demand, so it is a bit inflexible, but it is what it is. Also, I have to say this, guys. Um, banners no longer being the quickness source is huge. This is a big deal, okay? A big, big deal. Because guess what? That means those banners that give um, stability or barrier... You can now use those reactively. So you can use stability when you need it instead of just having to use it on rotation. You can use the barrier when you need it instead of having to just rotate it um, around like that as well. Of course, some of them, like the damaging ones, you can still use off cooldown if you want to. Uh, but I do think this is actually a very impactful change because it allows you to be a bit more reactive with your banner of tactics and uh, banner of, uh, the, uh, what is it called? Banner of the, the other one. Okay, um, Banner of Defense. Yeah, Banner of Defense. You can be much more reactive with those, which, which definitely opens the door towards a healing warrior uh, down the line when we get a new weapon in the game. Uh, and also improves the utility of any warrior quickness or alacrity build because you can then kind of slot in that banner and then like slap it down there as well. Which, funnily enough, can definitely happen on a few warrior builds. Warrior builds often run signets, which are obviously DPS increases, but you can kind of swap them in. Um, occasionally to kind of get a banner in for a bit of that utility. Uh, notably, Spellbreaker, of course, can actually go ahead and grab the Elite Banner too, right? And the Elite Banner can be used as a revival, right? Uh, for a very low opportunity cost on Spellbreaker. So this does actually open the door for some really cool utility on Warrior Builds um, as of right now. Kind of like move, not exactly like the full offensive support set, but certainly even the DPS builds can actually get some value out of this, in my opinion. Uh, pretty interesting stuff, guys. Interesting stuff. Oh, yeah. And there I go. But yeah, stay tuned for Bladesworn, guys. And I guess staying on the Bladesworn tune here. Look at this. They finally found a use for Daring Dragon. This trait was a this trait was kind of cool. It makes you charge up. Um, you have a lower maximum charge, and you charge up faster, and you consume more flow. But the damage uh, per charge didn't do as much. It was basically meh because of how exponential the damage was uh, on Dragon Trigger. But they've actually increased that up so it's not quite as scuffed compared to a full Dragon Trigger. And check this out. You grant alacrity to nearby allies when you use Dragon Slash. Look at that. They just like slot it in there. Daring Dragon. Uh, you are indeed daring. You dare to dream of an alac alacrity warrior. And here it is. Uh, Alacrity Warrior has arrived uh, for your Blade Sword. Will be an interesting build. The, the really big thing... Uh, is is going to be looking at how much damage this does and how much of a DPS loss it is. I'm not totally convinced that it really has what it takes to compete with the other Alacrity builds. So, so here's the thing, right? What's happened in this patch is I feel like we're in the foundation stage. They've like, right, you get that boon, you get that boon, pfft, go. But... A lot of other builds are a lot more fleshed out, right? They'll give protection, they'll give might, they can heal, right? They can give stability, right? They can do Aegis. And I think some of these builds are a little bit not quite there. I get it, we have some stability and protection now in the tactics straight line, but bear in mind, it's not exactly on demand. You have to use it rotationally to do damage because of Dragon Trigger. So it's like, ah, we're... we're we're, we're in the primordial stages, right? Like, this is going to be one of the balance patches that's had the most changes, the most new features, the most new builds that have kind of popped up. So it's going to be chaos. It's going to be madness, in my opinion. Um, and we need th this is not going to be a one and done, right? Like, this is going to be... It's going to take them a while to actually continue to iterate on all of these. Because right now, Alacrity Blade Sworn, I mean, maybe it will pump really hard and it will be that kind of glass cannon build for Alacrity um, that might see some very niche play. But I, are we going to see Are we going to see the meta taken over by Alacrity Blade Swans? I don't think so. And I actually feel the same way about um, Berserker, I think. Um, no, the, may, maybe not. Like, um... I can see Condi Berserker having some potential. Like, Condi Quickness Berserker, I can see having a bit of potential, I think. 
Um, the barrier boo, uh, sorry, the banner boon access is pretty interesting. You can get very easy access to resistance, for example. You can have some stability in here. You can give quickness now whenever you um, land your burst skills, right? It is a bit weird that you have to land your burst to do it, because again, you need a target to give quickness, which is a little bit awkward, to be honest, um, on some of these builds, uh, I think, but eh. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you don't get the extra condition damage anymore on Heat the Soul. So this is a bit unfortunate if you are a Condi fan. But of course, this is definitely designed to be like um, a power or a Condi trait, not one or the other. Uh, a bit of a buff to full DPS Condi um, Berserker, by the way. Uh, as you can see uh, here, this trait uh, converts 10% of power to Condi damage as well. And it then doubles while you're in Berserk mode. So just more flat stats for our Condi Berserker. And again, just more flat damage on Flaming Flurry, the Sword Primal Burst. Uh, Arc Divider. Uh, this is one of those ping pong skills. It got reverted, then it got unreverted. Now it's getting reverted again. Uh, so now you just spin once. And you get one attack instead of three. So you don't have that, like, one, two, three. You now have, like, a big, like, boom, wallop. I don't know. <laughs> Warrior mains, which one do you prefer? You guys, you guys tell me, okay? Like, <laughs> you tell me. Uh, because at this point, Anet don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. Uh, so the power coefficient, uh, of course, is going down, right? Because you're casting it way less, right? The cast time is going down from 1.86 seconds to 0 0.8. So the damage goes down. But broadly speaking, it's probably going to wind up the same because you're going to be spamming it way harder. You're going to be using other abilities more because you're not channeling this skill, right? Etc. 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 I I actually kind of feel like the design here... Um, the design here is aimed at PvP. I think... This ability in PvP um, was very frustrating for new players, I think. Uh, Berserker would just completely smush new players in PvP and one-shot them. And I think they wanted to try and address this. Uh, actually. Um, maybe the same in World vs. World 2. Um, and in PvE, they just wanted to keep it basically the same. Right, uh, and maybe you like the triple spin, maybe you don't, but this is what you've got. Uh, and Bloody Raw, actually, they nerfed the damage on Berserker a little bit. I'm kind of surprised about that, to be honest, uh, but there you go. Uh, <laughs> but you kind of got the damage back on Blood Reaction, right? Because now you get 10% and 20% um, precision to Frosty conversion uh, when you're in Berserk. So I guess the damage kind of comes back on Blood Reaction a little bit. Am I convinced by Quickness Berserker? <laughs> I actually do think it is actually a fair bit better, this patch, right? I think your stability being on demand is good. Uh, I think um, you're going to be able to do decent damage with that build. You're going to give quickness, right? You're a ranged build, which is pretty decent as well. You're pretty tanky. You've got some uh, reasonable CC and utility kind of attached to the build. I don't hate it, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I think... Yeah, you, you, you know what, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll, I'll be, we're going to be kind of moving towards the seal of approval here. I, I definitely think this is a significant improvement um, for the quickness warrior builds. A lack warrior exists, I guess. You know, like that, uh, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I guess a big part of it is can you like maintain Berserk? Because Berserker still has this weird thing where you just, you just need to maintain Berserk a lot. Otherwise, you just, you suffer significantly. So, we'll see how that one ends up playing out there. In terms of Spellbreaker, this is actually some world versus world uh, changes that are happening here. Again, kind of the final, uh, the final iteration now of this boon removal stuff being toned down a little bit. So, Winds Edition Enchantment is just four seconds in PvE, in, PvE, in world versus world now. Break Enchantments, four boons removed in PvE, which is actually really tasty, to be honest. And only one in world versus world. So, oof, halving it. Eesh. Pretty ouch. It is a short cooldown skill, though. Uh, dagger offhand will now actually remove boons when you strike a target. So you've got some more uh, boon removal on dagger offhand, I guess. You know, you can you can compensate, guys, okay, <laughs> with having this uh, Wastrel's Room, which I believe is maybe not exactly what you're looking for to remove loads of boons from AoE in uh, in World vs. World. And Bladestorm is going to grant barrier. Whoa. Because, you know, dude, did you guys? Yo, guys, guys, guys. Did you know that Spellbreaker got dagger main hand and offhand? I bet you didn't even know that. I bet you didn't even know that Spellbreaker had this weapon. Okay? 
<laughs> but they're trying to make it a little bit better, right? They're trying to buff it. I'm not sure if this is enough right now. Warrior weapons are actually surprisingly competitive, I think. It's quite hard to squeeze these in. Uh, but, pff, yeah, we'll see. I uh, will. I, 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 in fact, we will see. In fact, we won't see. Um, it would be more apt to say here. So when it comes to wins, um, wins are still going to be a very good skill, right? I, I think their goal here is to... I, I think their goal with this change is to basically prevent these kind of, like, no-go zones from being created with bubbles. Where it's like, the bubble is here, we've got to get out. Right, like we can't go there. Like a bubble in a way is almost like a force field in World Buster World. If the bubble is there, you're not going in, right? Like you're, you're not going in that bubble. It's still very dangerous. The incoming boon duration, the boon removal, of course, combined with enchantment collapse, right? This is a very powerful ability, right? The The goal is to prevent this from just basically being something that just pumps the brakes in World vs. World, so it doesn't take quite as long for things to reestablish. It's still a very powerful skill. And Break and Chalmers, again, just slightly re reducing the amount of boon removal uh, like overall that Spellbreaker has access to. It still has access to a lot of boon removal, um, uh, just in general, because, you know, whenever you land a CC, you remove a boon, and you can run a hammer, for example, which is obviously going to be very potent, and you still have Winds of Jump, you still have Enchantment Collapse, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, that's the goal here. Uh, again, I guess I'll just reiterate my concerns here. Uh, they do need to make sure that boons don't become too oppressive. Like, in World vs. World, you have this push and pull. You have the push and pull between boon application and boon removal. And the same with condies, right? Uh, you have this push and pull between condi application and condi removal. Uh, and right now, I, I would say it's actually surprisingly even, and this might tip the scale slightly in favor of boon application. Uh, condi application, well, we don't even talk about that, right? Condies really can't stick in World vs. World because the amount of cleanse that's there right now, that's perhaps an issue for another day. Uh, yeah, that's next patch, guys, right? But, yeah, that is going to be next patch. But... I think another mission that they might have here is that maybe you just run different classes, right? Or you lean into boon removal in different ways. Because um, the world versus world meta, specifically when it comes to stuff like stability, for example, when it comes to boon removal, it's been very heavily dominated by a few specs, kind of since the, the dawn of time, right? Um, and this may now potentially uh, break that up a little bit and we'll see other options being integrated into the meta that may have um, other uh, other potentials to remove boons, right? You can, you can have Mesmas to remove boons. Hell, Untamed can remove boons, right? All that kind of stuff. There are certainly some options that can kind of squeeze their way into that, right? We might see some Reapers popping up, right? Scourge will still be around. Spellbreak is still going to be, you know, like, it's not going to be bad, right? Like, it still is a, a good package for Worlds. The bubble is good, right? The support variant for larger groups, like the massive damage of Warrior in the, the small variants there as well. So, there's definitely some pretty good stuff here, guys. Like, there is content, right? You know, like, there's, uh, there's stuff here. You know, there is, it, there's, don't abandon all hope, guys, for the, for the Spellbreakers in World versus what. I don't think that is going to be necessary there as well. But I think we did it. Guys. We made it. We made it to the end of the patch notes. I don't believe it. We have got here. Oh. Oof. Oof. <laughs> oh, man. It's epic. Oh. I, I, one more thing on Warrior. I think this actually makes Bladesworn slightly better in PvP. Uh, which, I'm not even sure if Warrior mains like that, actually. Uh, <laughs> Have fun, guys. And I, I guess, like, yeah, the commentary on Warrior in um, PvP, actually, um, is a Spellbreaker uh, currently in PvP. Obviously, it's a competent duelist. Uh, but again, the meta we're in right now is not very duelist focused, right? And, and that's why Warrior kind of struggles to fit in. Bladesworn can a little bit more because it it it's it has uh, a decent presence in the team fight, right? While also being a very competent uh, duelist build. So that's kind of where Bladesworn is uh, right now. Uh, Berserker, more of a meme build. There's some very niche duelist builds actually um, with Berserker, like a condition damage Berserker uh, in PvP. But other than that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, support warrior, not really right now. Honestly, support warrior's kind of got out power crept, I think, by Tempest um, and Core Guard to a lesser extent. But yeah, uh, that's the deal there with that. So we might, you know, Blades one is already good. It might get a little bit better um, in uh, in PvP. 
Honestly, I, I wonder if the, if the alacrity could be interesting. Nah, ignoring the blind and the stun is too good, to be honest, um, in, in PvP. But anyway, I'm not going to ramble on any longer. I think I have kept you long enough, gamers, um, when it comes to these balance patches. And what a patch. Um, I think a little bit of a mixed bag. I really do think that... Um, my, my overall impressions here is that... They really wanted to say, okay, we don't want to do one new build per patch. We want to make a whole bunch of new builds. Um, and then some of them are probably going to be a bit bad. Some of them are probably going to be a little bit too good. And some of them are going to be weird or need design changes. And we'll go from here. It seems like this is very much the beginning Right? Um, the start of uh, a series of updates and some serious iteration, um, for sure. There are definitely some things that are pretty well-formed, like the Druid one. I feel like if every patch setup was like the Druid one, I think everyone would be super happy. I think Ranger got us a bunch of really fun changes that were very well fleshed out. I think that some of the other changes were maybe not quite as fleshed out. I would say notably Scourge uh, in PvE probably needs a little bit of iteration. Uh, kind of across the board uh, with this one. Uh, but there's definitely some really good stuff. I think Mesmer has a lot of potential. Firebrand is pretty happy with this, right? Um, overall, I'd say. Uh, NG, I think, is going to be fun uh, to see how that one plays out. Elementalist, honestly, not much happens there. But it will be really fun to see how DPS Tempest and DPS Alacrity Tempest work out. But again, kind of needs a little bit more iteration potentially on the Alacrity um, stuff there as well. Uh, down the line. Thief, I think will be fun, but Heal Thief needs a little bit more uh, work for sure. Thief, uh, Daredevil's gone a little bit weird. Quickness Deadeye seems like it could actually be really good content. Seems fairly well uh, developed there, actually. I'm definitely looking forward to that. And uh, Warrior, you know, things have happened, I guess. You know, we've got, look, look, we've got a lot of patch notes, but maybe not that much going on. I do like that we're, we're trying to change how banners work. Uh, banners are not really that much fun, in my opinion. So overall, I would say the patch is is pretty good, right? Uh, I, I think it's actually a pretty good patch. I really like the direction we're going. I think this is the first step, though. Uh, there's going to be a lot more iteration, in my opinion. I think the patch notes might change a fair bit before we actually launch on June 27th, and I'm, I'm expecting to see a few new things, a few tweaks, a few numbers tweaks, maybe even a few notes removed, right, uh, potentially, uh, I'd say, in this regard. But, uh, yeah. That... That is my take on the patch overall. Um, will certainly give us a lot more options. That will be the thing. But anyway, that is just going to about do it for the finale of the balance review. Okay, once again, I have successfully, su successfully, successfully, that's a weird accent, successfully tricked my Twitch audience into participating in a uh, YouTube video and... You know what? This is the best part about it. You know, I, I hear your feedback, guys. I hear your feedback. And, you know, I do apologize for this. Last time I did some YouTube videos, uh, my Twitch chat spammed XDD Tree a lot. Uh, and I understand that that did indeed ruin the viewing experience on the YouTube VOD for some of you. Uh, and don't worry. We are definitely not going to do that again. We are not going to do it. And in fact... Uh, I'm sure you guys are going to really enjoy the treeing emote, in fact, which is, of course, an animated version of XDD Tree. So uh, don't worry, guys. We will not be spamming these emotes on T-Town. We will not be spamming them during these balance notes. That's just not what we do. We're, we're much too mature for that over here uh, on, <laughs> on, on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I really appreciate everyone watching. Thanks for watching, gamers. Let me know what you think about all of the balance changes for every profession. It's probably going to be three videos. So if you're watching this one, make sure you're watching the other ones as well. Okay, we're going to split it in three, guys, because I love views. But also, I don't really want to upload like a two and a half hour balance breakdown video. Okay, we gotta we got to mix it up a little bit. Anyway, that's it. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube. Make sure to leave a comment. Make sure to watch all the other videos. And that's it. I'm out. Let me know, gamers. GG.